Okay, in this uh, video we're going to be talking about reflexes. Uh, I'm on page 3 of the Unit 3 notes. I'm on Roman numeral 6. Uh, reflexes. Uh, reflexes is a way that the spinal cord is going to help regulate homeostasis in our bodies to make sure that our muscles are at their correct degree of stretch or contraction. Reflexes are fast, predictable, automatic responses to changes in our environment. In these particular examples of spinal reflexes, uh, we're going to be adjusting to changes in the environment with regard to the degree of tension in our muscles. We also have cranial reflexes, which originate in the brain stem and use cranial nerves. We have somatic reflexes that involve contraction of skeletal muscles, like we're going to be looking at in here and autonomic reflexes, which control a lot of our viscera, like our cardiac muscle, our glands, etc. But we're going to focus on the spinal reflexes, the somatic reflexes here. <clears throat> All reflexes, whether they're somatic or cranial or visceral reflexes, are going to involve what's called a reflex arc. A reflex arc is the path that a nerve impulse will have to travel along the nervous system in order to complete the reflex action. Every reflex arc is going to require five steps or five components in order to function properly. I'm going to use this picture of a stretch reflex as an example of those five components. The first component you're going to see here as I circle, that is the receptor. Every, every reflex is going to require a sensory receptor. Something's going to have to monitor the situation in order for it to create an effect. <clears throat> Once that receptor is stimulated, it's going to have to generate a nerve impulse along a sensory neuron, which is the second part of the uh, second component of the reflex arc. The third component is the integrating center, which is going to be in the central nervous system, and that's the part of the reflex arc that is going to be de the decider. What's what's going to decide on what kind of action to take place and the decisions pretty much already made in reflexes because they're automatic and, and they're predictable but the area where that takes place is in the gray matter of the central nervous system and in this example in the spinal cord the integrating center is this synapse here between the sensory and motor neuron the second component is going to be the motor neuron which is uh, depicted in red in this image and it's going to travel out and it's going to carry the impulse back to the fifth component, which is the effector. That's the, the, the tissue, the gland, or the muscle that is going to carry out the action of the reflex arc, the response to the stimulus, really. Uh, some of the reflexes we're going to see are going to have multiple synapses in order to get it done. What you see here is in, there's a, another reflex attached to this reflex that has one synapse here and a second synapse here. The original reflex that we looked at only has one synapse here. If there's only one synapse for a reflex to complete its arc, that's called a monosynaptic reflex arc. One synapse. If it requires an interneuron, which is this neuron in between the motor and the sensory neuron here, it's going to require two synapses. One, two. That is a polysynaptic reflex arc. It's important to see the difference between those two. Reflexes enable the body to make very rapid adjustments to changes in the internal or external environment. They're very predictable and therefore they can give us very useful information about the state of our nervous system. For example, if you have a diminished reflex in the uh, patellar ligament, which is a quadricep reflex, you can trace that, ner that reflex arc back to a very specific spinal nerve and a very specific level of the spinal cord. If that reflex is not functioning properly, you can make a reasonable assumption that there may be a disruption in the nerve impulse conduction along that path, and it would help someone to diagnose an injury or a condition because it would show them where they should look to find the problem. Reflexes are very valuable in that way.